as I'm starting to deplete down and cars are coming down, weight, um, my body weight, my body fat. Ultimately, like, I've reduced my volume a little bit. One of the things, you know, uh, depleting a depleted muscle, I don't want to go too far, so, you know, I flatten out quick, so I play with my rep range, keeping it between on a failure heavy set, maybe six, eight, normal set, maybe eight, 12, 12 top, but kind of between the eight, 10 range right now. Um, but, you know, going to failure, maybe a couple reps, a little assisted, but most of the time right now, we're just trying to really just get a feel, get some blood in there, but not kill it. We're hitting some chest today. We're 11 days out of the Arnold Brazil. Being 11 days out, you know, energy levels, uh, they're kind of a roller coaster. You know, one day's a good day. Today felt pretty good. Yesterday I did some hamstrings and it was, it was totally dragging and uh, it's to be expected, you know. It's like I, I tell people, you know, it hurts to get in shape and, and if you're feeling good and, and happy all the time, you're not doing something right. So um, you're going to have good days and, you know, you, you either get a little more food or you'll be a little more energetic and, and uh, today being chest, I uh, had, you know, slept good last night and got some meals in me and knowing that I'll, you guys were here definitely gets a little bit of boost of motivation. I, I'm i one that needs to lift heavy, kind of get my body to respond, but, uh, you know, as I, I stay pretty strong through my diet, but the biggest thing that I find that, you know, that 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th rep, last rep or two of the set tend to fail just because it kind of run out of fuel. Um, that's about the only difference, you know, but I don't make any excuse because I'm dieting but not train heavy. And I've always done that from, uh, you know, when I started. I always, you know, it was a mental thing for me, so I was like, you know, I can push through it. But, you know, you fatigue, about the only thing that I notice is fatiguing faster in my set. We're gonna knock this, we're gonna do a heavy set right now, incline, we're gonna go four plates, you know, I still feel strong. Not doing this just for the camera, it's what I normally do, so let's kill it. Boom. Come on, easy way for you. Easy. 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 Good. Come on. Up. Good. Up. Good. Come on. Up. Good. Nice. Easy. Come on. Up. Very good. Boys. How many was that? Six. Six. Strip one off. Let's get three. Right away. Come on. Good. 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 Um, you know, and then training with these two animals in their off season and, and you know keeps the intensity up. You know, I think if we're all dieting, we'd all be dragging and and it, you know it would be a bunch of uh, it'd be like a, a prissy party here and, and it'd be I got that from myself. <laughs> <clears throat> Today we started with the uh, incline bench, and that's kind of been our staple, and uh, it works. It just works. You know, we feel it. We got a good range. We get our, our pretty much where we find is our working part of the movement, and just stay in there. We're not going full lockout. We're not going full um, full depth to kind of take my shoulders out of the movement, and uh, we just keep it in that wheelhouse, so to speak. And. For me, keeping my rep range between six to 10 um, on the incline and most of my chest movements because when I'm doing that, it's helping keep the muscle full, keep my strength up, but without over, over depleting the muscle. You know, I'm depleting the muscle enough by keeping my carbohydrates down, by doing you know double sessions of cardio, and all that enough is depleting me. So we don't need to use the training as a depletion method, more or less a uh, method to keep my muscle full and, and pretty much keep what we have worked for. Um, and then from there, where do we, we hit the hammer strength, flat bench, and you. That's been kind of, a, we've been experimenting with, uh, with Steve a bunch of exercises. Again, this has been kind of his show. We're trying to group things around, trying to find out what he prefers, likes, and feels. And that, that movement on the hammer strength, it's kind of, it's a flat press with a slight, slight, slight incline angles. But from uh, with a slight arch in the back, uh, Steve is very good at effectively recruiting the pectoralis muscle instead of a lot of his shoulders. And you know, also with the aspect of rolling his shoulder, his shoulder blades back, he really isolates. And if you've noticed in the video, we spend a lot of time trying to reduce his range of motion so that he's not going all the way down, but he's also not locking out the top. 
you know, the theory is when you lock out the top, the tension is kind of flowing through the skeletal system into the ground. But if you bend your elbows, the tension stays in the muscle. It's kind of like standing and then bending your knees. You can see where the tension there or come or goes to. So uh, the flat press was a, a move we kind of used, even on the, uh, off days when we're doing the body parts, Steve will use that just to kind of pump up, keep the blood in the muscle, just a little stimulus, you know. And he's done a, an effective job, this, this uh, training, this uh, contest prep and keeping his chest full and um, just watching him make changes, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to see him make changes, but also kind of puts things in reality for all of us normal people out there that um, those don't happen to. If he uses his shoulders, he presses 600 pounds every time he wants to, but we just took away his shoulders, reduced the weight, reduced the range of motion, so that now the focus now becomes more for him lower chest. There's not much more he can do to cheat on the motion. We've been doing pause reps. Again, the tension is constant, so less shoulder. We don't, again, the shoulders are phenomenal. Sometimes they overpower, not hit only everyone else's physiques, but its own. So, trying to get that away from, from, from using that as much. It's been fun, but again, he's uh, training for a long time, so telling him what he already knows. So, <laughs> his, uh, his chest is, you know, it's gotten better. I think he could, if he keeps on training, his chest size could be. Absolutely phenomenal and a, a strong point for him because he's a freak, kind of like me. Uh, that and then I think we move on to uh, what I, again, kind of stupid, but I call it it's a fles. It's like a fly and a press all in the same one at an incline angle. Again, trying to maintain um, chest on the movement. You know, we uh, again we're not trying to lift 600 pounds. Um, you know, you guys saw Steve uh, incline 405. That's because he's depleted. Uh, full uh, glycogen eating, Steve, is a, a 500 pound incliner plus, and it's, it's stupid. I get other videos to show that, but uh, uh, again, the training's not a bit how strong you are. This is not a strong man contest. This is how much muscle you have in certain areas, so it's, it's, it's aesthetic to see again. Um, as Steve has you know, shown, for a 270 pound male to have the aesthetic symmetry that he has is, again, not fair. So, um, but I think from that, we went, Lou wants to explain that we did some flies, and then we went into the, 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 the pec deck. deck. and then with the cable fly. I think we tried a pronated grip, right? Mm -hmm. Again, a pronated pronate grip. grip we're, just, we're just trying to use a pronated grip again just to uh, eliminate the deltoid again. We're, we're turning, the dumbbells are turning our palms facing each other. Here we got kind of our, our palms down. We're doing a, almost like a press grip. But squeezing that to really get a good contraction. One of those field things for us, you know, it's kind of changing the grip, the no range. No, no shoulder for me, more chest. Uh, doing, we're finishing with the cable fly, you know. For us, we like to do it as uh, almost we're hitting a pose, and Dan always says, you know, use this as like one of your strong poses. Being the most muscular, I kind of like to take my shoulder out of it and come from underneath into what would be like a most muscular uh, standing up, up straight pose, and then uh, finish with a couple partial reps of uh, kind of, it would be like an incline, leaning forward and just hitting the top part of the chest, just a couple. Uh, exhausting or, or partial range of fly movement just to get a little more blood and just kind of just finish it off i think we totaled about 15 sets uh within an hour and i mean we we moved pretty good um, good intensity today i'm very happy being 11 days out um, you know, right now i'm sitting about uh low 270s so weight is is holding pretty good making changes so we're kind of doing that as I'm drying out. You know, my weight's sticking a little bit. The mornings may drop down to 269, 268, and then as I eat and rehydrate, because I mean, I'm up every two hours at night peeing. It's one of the things that kind of sucks pre-contest is having, you know, your body just turns into a machine and flushing water, and, and you're hydrating so much, we're drinking so much water that every hour and a half, I mean, I, I pee three times during this workout, and at night I'm up every hour and a half, two hours, like, on, I mean, almost like an alarm, um, but ultimately it's, you know, you're seeing your body, my body change every day, and you know, you have good days, bad days, but you want to make continual progress, and since the last time we, we filmed, I've, you know, things have really started to work for me, even my diet's really, you know, we, we made some 
changes. We cut my carbs down a bit. Um, and make some adjustments to my cardio. I'm doing double sessions cardio right now. Uh, 45 minutes in the morning, half hour at night. And, you know, in training midday between 4 and 5 o'clock. And it's been working real well. First thing in the morning, cardio. Then we hit training afternoon. And then it, it's nice because I got the piece of cardio equipment in my house so I don't have to drive to the gym. And then at night, it depends. I'll do it anywhere from 10 o'clock. If I and then if I fall asleep because I'm too tired, I'll get up at midnight or one o'clock and do my cardio. Um, but I'm getting it in. You know, I'm real, real motivated for this show. Real excited to get on stage. You know, I got a, a great lineup of guys I'm going against, and um, you know, excited to bring my best. You know, I feel I've been told uh, Hani several times that 2011 is my best condition to date, and I am going to match or beat that. Come. 11 days in Brazil. So I look forward to meeting all the fans down in Brazil. Um, you guys are have been showing a lot of support online and, and all my Instagram and, and MD and everybody that's following me right now and, and give me give me a boost of motivation. I really appreciate it. And having you know training here with these two animals and having muscular development here is, is huge. So you know having Evage and Nutrition and MD and you know my sponsors is, is just a, I couldn't do it without you guys so I thank you guys for coming out and looking forward to seeing you in a few days in Brazil because in one week we're going to be on an airplane flying. Team King Snake is here representing Evage and Nutrition, Muscular Development, Steve Kuklo, Lou, Dan, Big <laughs> <laughs> We're out!